BYUSN on the road again. BYU men's basketball nice. off to Kansas for the Sunflower State Showdowns, beginning with Kansas State. Are postseason ramifications really at stake for the Cougars tomorrow in Manhattan? We'll preview the matchup at length with the Cougars and Wildcats and do so with BYU's all-time leading scorer, Tyler Hawes. What is the key to BYU getting another tough road win? It's a big weekend for men's volleyball. It's the Cougars host rival and number four ranked UCLA won the national championship last year. So the Cougars need to win at least one to keep pace in the MPSF. And it's a meet night as gymnastics hosts number seven Denver, Brindley Anderson and Ava Jorgensen breaking down. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Friday. February 23rd, I am Spencer Linton. He is baby watch reporter for the Channel 4 News team out of San Diego, Jerem Jordan. No touching of the face and hair, and that's it! <laughs> uh, okay, so yesterday, Spencer Johnson and his wife Izzy had their baby boy. Congratulations to the Johnson. Yeah! Izzy did all the hard work. Spencer didn't do jack squat, just was supportive, which that's what you got to do in that room. Shout out to the Coke products on the right. But uh, yeah, still trying to... Uh, hear what the baby boy's name is. We think it's Spencer Jr. Uh, after uh, Spencer, of course, but would you'd be in there. Or Jerem, we're hoping for one of those two. Okay, okay. Uh, but we don't know. The stats on this are 8 pounds, 21.25 inches, so good good length. Healthy baby. Spencer Johnson has uh, born in, in the afternoon at 222 on 222. Ladies now and that's gentlemen. A, now that's a fact. Our baby watch reporter, Jerem Jordan. Okay, and when we were in Kansas City, I love me uh, these guys are old comment, right? But Bill Self took it to another level, the Kansas head coach. He said the following. Well, if you're going to get old and stay old, I think Provo, Utah is probably the place to go. we got a place for you. you got a place for you because you're going to be playing with 23, 24-year-olds that have, you know, strollers in their, in, in their trunks Okay, first off, this is not true. There's a 26-year-old. Yep, um, and it is Spencer. And the, <laughs> it is Spencer. And there was only one dude with stroller in his trunk, and it was Traden Christensen. But now, there today, are, there are two. There are two. Let's so go. Bill Self finally <laughs> is right in his plural use yes. of strollers. The timing of this, <laughs> given that it is Kansas week, is yeah. just phenomenal. Which, right? by the way, BYU decided they're not going to go out for the whole trip. They're going to come back Saturday Why night. Back? They're not going to do what they then did with West Virginia and Oklahoma. It didn't work out at Oklahoma. Maybe I don't know if it was like, oh, that didn't go well. Let's not do that again. Maybe it's just too long out on the road. I don't know. Or uh, I don't know the uh, reasoning there, but uh, BYU's coming home after Kansas State. And then they'll go back for the Tuesday night showdown. Spencer and Izzy are registered at Target for baby gifts. Oh, I'm right. just kidding. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> the chances of that are likely. The chances of uh, that are really high. There are strollers involved now. That would be awesome if Cougar Nation just like filled it up. They're like, we got everything we want. <laughs> Boom! Somewhere along the line, I feel like it would be like, well, if you play at Kansas State, then I'll oh donate. <laughs> it's contingent. Like, it's all transactional. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. Uh, our sincere congratulations yeah, to awesome, the Johnsons. Man. That's fantastic news. All rise and shout. Let's get to what's trending. Finger roll it and score it. K-State didn't get back, and Jackson made him pay. Wow, pirouettes off the glass for two. He's got Six. The Cougs are 5-5 five and five in the Big 12. He got it! There it is! A shot of the night for BYU and Trevin Nell. What is at stake tomorrow for BYU men's basketball as they're back on the road beginning at Kansas State? The Cougars riding a huge wave of momentum, having beaten 11th-ranked Baylor earlier this week. I heard that. Man. But still there in the recent past is that Road loss at Oklahoma State. A lot's happened in the last seven days. The emotions have, have swung wildly yeah. for the fan base, the coaches, the team. Yeah. But as we look at what's on the line here, Jerem, does BYU have to beat Kansas State? With I mean, there are five games remaining in Big 12 play, including the game in Manhattan tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Do they have to beat the Wildcats to finish with a winning record in the Big 12? Indeed they do, Spence. Because at Kansas and uh, Iowa State, they're 28 and home. 28 and home at home combined. That's too tough, dog. So if uh, you got to beat TCU at home now, in wait, Oklahoma State. Wait a second. You're telling me Kansas and Iowa State combined have not lost a home game all season. That's the fact. But BYU fans tell me that I am I am Spencer the doubter, Jerem. 
I thought that was my role on this show. Wait a minute. What do you get off my lawn? No. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be tough to win those. If you win one of them, that's a that's the best win of the year at Kansas State. You got to win. You got to beat TCU at home. You got to beat Oklahoma State at home for sure. I like the round two thing, the second matchup for BYU right now. So Kansas State round two, you won at home. Boom. At Kansas first game, if you compete well and show up, great. Whatever. TCU first matchup. Got to beat them, right? At Iowa State, you've already beaten them at home. Round two, that's going to be tough. That might be the first round two BYU doesn't win. I expect BYU to win Saturday against Kansas State. And Oklahoma State, you should do that. I bet BYU goes 4-1 and one in the second game with those five. Mm. I, I really do. I think BYU will do very well. And remember, the, the schedule's been very favorable for BYU. ESPN said BYU has the uh, you know, uh, easiest of the 14 teams in the Big 12, that schedule. Because you only play Houston once. It was at home. You only played Kansas once. You only played Texas Tech once. You only played Texas Tech once. Uh, You only played TCU once. It's not like BYU. uh, BYU got some of the lower echelon teams twice. So they can get them and beat them a couple of times. So take advantage. BYU doesn't make the schedule. The league does. I don't know if you knew this. BYU is in a league now in uh, in, uh, all sports, including football, which is cool. So get it done Saturday. And then you have a shot at being 10 and 8 in the Big 12. Wild. I certainly think that tomorrow will require a win to get over 500. 9 and 9. If you lose tomorrow, you're probably going 9 and 9. But that assumes that you beat TCU and Oklahoma State on, at home and that you don't win big games at Kansas and Iowa State. For the record, 9 and 9 would be incredible. Yeah. 9 and 9 in year one in this league would be unbelievable. So I still think, hey, I'm riding with 9, but. I, I want to say I expect BYU to beat Kansas State tomorrow. And I know Kansas State's lost seven of the last eight games. But the one win they had in that eight-game stretch was on their home floor, and it was against Kansas. Kansas. Yep. I, it just yep. – Kansas State will be ultra-motivated. They're bugged that they recently lost to BYU, so they have plenty of reasons to come out and play very, very hard. And there's that – Weird commentary from Jerome Tang after the game in Provo where it's like, well, we knew that they were going to, like, you know, fade away. It's just how they play. It's what they do. I, 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 I don't the Quez know. Quez Glover thing preseason kind of plays into this a little bit, although Quez had a season-ending injury, hasn't played. I like BYU's chances tomorrow, but it feels like a coin flip game to me. You know, BYU is given a 63% chance to win this game. I like on the road. It feels like a 50-50 game to me on the road, but I'll take those odds in the Big 12 in a road environment all day, every day. Uh, Does BYU have to beat Kansas State? Technically speaking, no, because there are opportunities out there. Yes, but... I mean, if we're talking percentages, right? No. Nobody's won at Iowa State in Kansas. Literally nobody this year. And it's not like TCU is going to be a pushover. They're very mature. They're an older veteran squad. Jamie Dixon is an incredible basketball coach. That's an old whack rivalry. I, don't, I couldn't tell you a single whack game with those two. I, I know remember. BYU gets TCU on their home floor. But yeah. that, that in game. and of itself is a tough game. I would say Oklahoma State is tougher than you think. I know it's at home. They're but like, playing better. They're playing better, and it's a team that beat you already. BYU will be ultra motivated in that regular season finale on senior night. I'm more intimidated by BYU against Oklahoma State than I was Baylor uh, because I know that BYU gets up for games like Baylor. Can you get up for the Oklahoma State Mm. game on senior night? Can BYU, yeah, can they manufacture energy on the road or take even a portion of what they experience at home and and take it into an opposing gym and, and do what BYU does? Yes, I, I am with you. I, I feel like logistically, BYU has to beat Kansas State to have any shot at finishing 10 and 8. And it's going to be tough. And even, even if then, BYU beats Kansas yes, State. Yes, even then. You st- it's TCU hard. and Oklahoma State are good teams. Even in pro, they're good teams. Nothing's guaranteed, man. Just because you're at home against TCU and Oklahoma State doesn't mean you automatically win. You're certainly confident, you're feeling good. But you have to go out there and beat these teams. And every single one of these wins is. Precious, yes, man. Yes, yes. The, the fact that BYU has compiled seven of them already. We walked into the year and we're like, please get six. Please get over 500 at some point. Please get go six and 12. Like, yeah, yeah. BYU is breathing that fresh ocean air right now above 500. Let's go. I love it. Seven so, and six right now. It, yeah, it, it feels like it is. Okay, 10 and eight. You have to beat Kansas State to keep that real 
logical hope alive. And and super winnable compared to certain games. But like BYU lost at Oklahoma State, so in this league anything is possible, right? So here's the next question. Does BYU have to win at Kansas State to have a shot at being a five seed or better in the NCAA tournament? Yes, I, I feel like there is a symbiotic relationship between these two questions. No. Like BYU getting to a five seed, I believe will require them to have a winning record in the Big 12. That is the key to BYU being a five seed or better. And I don't think it's going to get much better. I think five seeds the peak right now. I, I mean, if you go four. and win at Kansas or you win at Iowa State, then now, now you could be a four. Now, now that jumps you up to like the four seed. I don't think you get up to a three there, but like you'd have to go to the Big Twelve title game and have one of those two wins. Like BYU would probably <laughs> to, have give to give yourself they'd a chance. Probably have to crazy. win out in Big Twelve play to hit a three seed. Like oh, you you won. <laughs> the last five games, including road wins at Iowa State and Kansas, yeah, you're a three seed. Now you're top four seed. You don't show up till Thursday. You're hoping to win that game. You know, you're in the semifinals in Kansas City. Yeah, I, I'm thinking BYU is uh, at best five, at worst seven. Which is an amazing place which to be. Which you're a favorite in those games. Eight, nine is a toss-up kind of thing, even if you're the eight, whatever. Five, 12, I, I know 50% of those fives lose. Yeah the last X amount of years, but I would love a five man. Cause you, the, the way to win, the way to get to the sweet 16 is to have great matchups, but ideally you're the highest seed possible in 20, obviously in 2011, you didn't do anything spectacular to get to the sweet 16. They beat an 11, uh, sorry, a 14 in Wofford. And then Gonzaga was an 11 who upset St. John's who was a six. So you beat a 14 and an 11. You're supposed to when you're a three, but that doesn't mean it wasn't exciting, but certainly that road is much easier, Spence. If you're a 5, beat a 12, beat a 4, or maybe a 13 upsets a 4. And maybe do it in Salt Lake City. And maybe do it in Salt Lake. That'd be great. Like, would you ra- – we'll get into this, but just tease me. Um, now, would you rather be in Salt Lake any seed, or would you rather have the best seed possible elsewhere? Salt Lake City, any seed. Mm. Home court matters All the Cougar so fans in there. much. It will be – a de facto home game for BYU if they're playing in Salt Lake City. BYU, BYU fans will fell to find an a way. They were in an 8-9, but they were in Salt Lake. They'll win the game. And then they got a shot against whoever they're playing, the number one seed. A one seed. Because of And then you hope for like the and, second yes. time ever that a 16 <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well, it'll be the third time ever now, right? Is that happened it, twice? Yeah, it happened to Purdue. Right, right, Purdue last year. And then Virginia before. Virginia even, was who? the first. It was, it was UMBC, UMBC, the Retrievers. Famously, I bought a T-shirt. Yes. I remember that. Yes. What? And then Fairleigh Dickinson. Oh, FDU. That's that, right. Yeah. FDU. Okay. I, I, it would be fun in Salt Lake, no doubt, 100%. What I want the most is for BYU to win. I, yeah, it's matchup versus home court. That is an interesting conversation. You, you certainly help yourself. If you can win games that are supposed to be winnable, Saturday is one of them. And then uh, go compete against Kansas and then come home and beat TCU. Go compete on a Wednesday, by the way, the only Wednesday league game, at Iowa State. And then Saturday, March 9th, is the home finale yes. senior night against Oklahoma State. If BYU can go 3-2, and two, you're 10-8. and eight. You're walking into uh, Kansas City probably like a 6. 6 or 7 seed. seed. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you, you go from there. You know, you wait for the, uh, the best matchup and you try and get yourself – like, if BYU can win a game in Kansas City, I'm good, Doc. If they get to Friday in the semifinals, even better. Even better. Yeah, BYU's 10-8. and eight. They're probably the sixth seed in the Big 12 tournament. Yeah. And if they're 9-9, nine and nine, you're probably in that seventh or T7 spot, and depending on tiebreakers. What, you're playing in the – regardless, you're, you're playing most likely in the 7-10 game yeah. to open up play on Wednesday. Yeah, 7-10, and then you'd play a two. If you're the six, you'd play the 11-14, and then you'd play the three. Which could be Kansas. Like, if you're the, oh if you're the six and you play, the three seed could be Kansas in Kansas City. I don't want anything with Kansas because no. Kansas in that tournament is Or tough. Kansas State. I know Texas won it last year. Well, Kansas State is not as formidable in that tournament. I'm just saying, like, I'm just it, saying home court. Like, I just don't want to play a Kansas team in Kansas. Yeah. True. Right? I, I, I'd rather play Kansas State, though. Oh, Kansas. For sure. Like, Kansas is 45 minutes from campus. They own that tourney. It's it's the old – it's Gonzaga in Vegas. It's UNLV in, in Vegas. It's, it's UNLV on their home floor. Well, but really good. <laughs> like, UNLV was fine. They weren't, like, great. Kansas is awesome. I know they've struggled this year, but that would stink. BYU currently – Unless it's Friday. Unless, unless you somehow Friday. get to them Friday. Hey, I'll whatever. take anybody sure. Friday. You yeah, gotta, whatever. You got to blow through the best on Friday.
Currently in Lunardi's bracket, BYU is six seed. That's fresh this morning. Yeah. Okay, and playing in no. Pittsburgh. Now hold on. Now hold on. Now hold on a minute, all right. Spencer. All right, all right. They would play the winner. He said the winner of Seton Hall and Gonzaga. Oh, okay. Can you imagine playing Gonzaga as the bookend? <sighs> You played them the year before you got into the WCC, now the year after you play Gonzaga. And they would be an 11 seed again. It's like, we broke up with you! Get out of my DMs! That's what it would be like if BYU plays Gonzaga. I mean, it's juicy. (laughs) I do not want that. I do not want that! No. No, unless Jimmer suits up. (laughs) Then I want it. For sure. Uh, Jerry Palm. Why is Jerry Palm always the guy that has BYU as, like, the lowest seed? Come on, Jerry! Like, (laughs) he's got him as a seventh seed. What the heck, man? Well, we could go to Bracket Matrix and find some others that have BYU. Bracket lower, Matrix, right? uh, 5.86 average. Okay. Uh, high of a four seed, low of eight seed. Who's got BYU as an eight matrix. seed right now? Let's, like, what, what in the world? This, What's this, happening this here? This information I can Jared look up. looks that you, up, yeah, I'm yeah. pulling up our poll question of the day. Oh, your mom's block spot did it. That's <laughs> Which, mom, gosh. What do you do? Come on. Be favorable to the kooks. What? Which of the following statements about BYU men's basketball is most true right now? A, BYU will win at Kansas tomorrow. B, BYU will finish the regular season with a winning record in the Big 12. C, BYU will win at least one game in the Big 12 tournament. Or D, BYU will be a five-seater higher in the NCAA tournament. The leader in the clubhouse of those four options right now is BYU will win at least one game in the Big 12 tournament. 47% of the vote on X says that is the case. 37% on Instagram. Uh, but the numbers are pretty pretty diverse here. I think 22% say BYU will win at Kansas State tomorrow. Uh, yeah, B- not a lot of confidence that BYU be a five seed or better in the NCAA tournament. Only nine that, percent on X. That'd be nice. Uh, there's some source named Oaks Creek. What the uh, heck? Oaks Creek? BYU. Uh, b- yeah, it looked like Sports Illustrated might have been one of them as well. I don't know. Some dude. Yeah, a bunch of AI bots because no one works there anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. There's a bunch of random brackets. We this amateur start. hour at Oaks Creek, we'd s- eight seed. We'd start one, but uh, we don't have time. Good yeah. grief. Air underscore Gordon 12 on X adds this. With such a tough finish to the regular season, a winning record might be hard to achieve. Truth. Going 500 would be awesome, but at this point, with the likelihood of where BYU will be seated in the Big 12 tournament, I like the Cougs' chances to get at least one win to boost the resume. It, it feels you, like BYU yeah. is pacing for a six or a seven seed yes. in Kansas City. You'll be a favorite in that game. You're supposed to win it. Win on Wednesday, get to Thursday, and then it'd be nice to advance. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world. If you win on – the game you play on Thursday will be a quad one. The game you play on – Wednesday will probably be a quad two. It might even be a quad three, depending on if it's Oklahoma State or West Virginia. You know what I don't want BYU to have to deal with on Wednesday? The 8-9 game where you're playing, like, Oklahoma, right? Oh. And then your, your reward and is you get to play Houston. Houston, probably. Like, oh. eee, that'd be bad. Don't slide to the eight. Like, d- <laughs> did we just figure this out? Does BYU have to win tomorrow to avoid the 8-9? They perhaps? have to win two of the final five to avoid the 8-9 scenario. You got to win two of the final five okay, and finish nine and nine. Nine and nine, about. nine, and nine about is the key. Three. We're not talking about winning two. <laughs> I feel like two is gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, win two. Okay. Tomorrow, listen to the game on BYU Radio at st- pregame coverage starting at one Eastern. BYU number twenty-five in the country at Kansas State. Big game. A lot of stakes as we talked about. Check out the pregame tomorrow. Let's go really in depth and preview this BYU yeah. Kansas State showdown with BYU's all-time leading scorer and BYU TV analyst Tyler Haas. Listen, he's got the key to really why BYU has taken such a big step this year. Stay with us. Here drops it on the drive and scores it. Passes out of it to Noah. Wide open three. He knocks it down. Drifts to his right. Finds daylight. Denied by Jackson Robinson. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. And joining us now is the all-time leading scorer in BYU basketball really? history. He wasn't denied much like Jackson Robinson denied Baylor. He is Tyler Haas. T. Haas, welcome back to BYUS. And happy Friday, brother. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me on. BYU knocks off Baylor. They've got some momentum, but now the challenge is clearly... 
How do you kind of bottle some of that energy and take it on the road to Kansas State? So if you are the mental strength coach and the prep coach for BYU, what are you saying to these guys, knowing what happened at Oklahoma State, as they go back out on the road for two games in Kansas? Man, well, I think you, you're you right. You've got to take the momentum of this Baylor game and ride it as long as you can. I, I think BYU found something in that Baylor game that they've been missing fr from the three-point line, right? I mean, their goal has been to shoot 35 threes, and they they were under under that the last four or five games, only only shooting about 25 threes and not, not even getting to that that double digit three point mark, which has been so key for them. I feel like this season and they were able to, I mean, they make 14 threes, 20 assists. I mean, the ball was just moving. It seemed like they were getting to the spots on the floor that they wanted. And so I, I hope to see that, that, you know, the remaining, remaining five games uh, in conference play. Uh, but, but really, yeah, it, it does not get any easier. These road games in the Big 12 are, are so tough. And Kansas State's a team that, I mean, plays so well at home. Tyler Perry, Carter, Ames, like their guard line is just so tough. They make shots at home. And so, um, but, you know, that, that Kansas State game at home, BYU did a great job defensively. And I think, you know, it starts on the defensive end being locked in. And, um, and, and then, you know, that, that bleeds into their offensive game, I think, uh, and, and helps them, you know, get into the flow and get into the rhythm. 66 points allowed against Kansas State in the first matchup. Only 71 against Baylor. Yeah, you got to play some good defense. Our question of the day is this. We want to get your uh, response here. Which of the following statements about BYU men's basketball is most true right now? BYU will win at Kansas State tomorrow. BYU will finish the regular season with the winning record in the Big 12. They'll win at least one game in the Big 12 tournament. Or BYU will be a five seed or higher in the dance. Well, I yeah, all, all those are, are really good scenarios. I, I'm going to take BYU being a five seed. Wow. Whoa. Big Dance. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's my least yes. true right now. <laughs> I think that's the most true for me. What they did in that Baylor game was so impressive to me. There were a lot of question marks coming out of Oklahoma State, but I just thought they, they responded so well and – this is the time of year that you want to be peaking and playing your best basketball. And BYU did that in the Baylor game against the number 11 team in the country. And listen, Baylor played a great game, I thought. Uh, shot the ball well. I mean, there were stretches in that game where they were making shots. They got off to a really strong start. And BYU just took the punches and punched back. And I mean, I, I feel like they're playing their best basketball. And so, you know, would it help BYU if they won at Kansas State? For sure. If you can get this first road win, um, that will kind of ease the pressure going into those last four games. But, you know, I think BYU is going to find a way to win one of these road games, uh, as, as hard as that is. And if they can take care of business at home, I don't see why they couldn't be a, a five seed. Tyler, let's talk about the ramifications of what a win tomorrow in Manhattan, Kansas, would actually mean for BYU. Sure, it helps the cause for BYU to be a higher seed in the NCAA tournament, but do you feel like for BYU to have a winning record in the Big 12, they have to win at Kansas State tomorrow? Uh, you know, the short answer is yes. Like, they – it would definitely help them. It would ease the, the the pressure going into those last four. I mean, to win at Kansas, win at Iowa State, those are just really, really tough venues to play. And, and Kansas State, too. But, you know, I think if they can find a way to win, uh, win tomorrow, that, that will help them. And then you take care of business at home. Um, but, you know, it, it's not the end 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 all right if they don't win tomorrow i i think byu has shown that they uh can play teams tough on the road like a lot of their road games i feel like they they just couldn't find a way to to make shots go in, in the second half we we've talked a lot about um you know the, their second half play they they get you watch byu they play super unselfish they play together and they 
take and and make uh, make three point shots. Like they take really good shots, and and I think in those road games they just miss those really really good opportunities. And you know I think in one of these last road games I, I think they could have a moment where they may they see those shots go down and and knock one of these teams off. That's the hope because there's only one road game that BYU's played where we were like, ah, they were just kind of out of it. It was Oklahoma. That was it. Every other game was like, hey, BYU's in this and didn't make enough, as you mentioned, at the end. Okay, Spencer Johnson and Izzy, they just had their uh, baby boy yesterday. Congrats to the Johnson family, as we mentioned earlier. Um, If Spencer Johnson doesn't play at Kansas State, which we don't know quite yet if he is or is not, we'd understand if he doesn't, how does BYU adjust yeah, it's a good question. No, congrats to uh, Spencer and Izzy. It's an awesome, fun time of life. Crazy that it, that it happens at this moment in the season. Uh, but yes, I mean, Spence is such a, a steadying force on this team and provides such a calmness out there. Um, you know, and, and thinking back to th- this Kansas State game, I mean, how big was Spencer Johnson down the stretch? Yeah. That, uh, mitigating the the press and the pressure that Kansas State put on him. He got that layup right at the end. I mean, that that veteran leadership and, and calmness going down the stretch uh, will definitely be missed. But I think, you know, this BYU roster is deep, especially at the guard line and its next man up mentality. I think, you know, Richie Saunders has been playing incredibly well. Uh, he could fill in uh, that role, I think, uh, Trevin Nell, I mean, he had a great game last game, knocked down some really big shots, needed shots for BYU. Uh, Jackson Robinson has been playing well. I think the guards just have to find a way to step up and be ready to go. And, you know, if he, if he plays great, but if he doesn't, like, we got to keep moving and, and got to keep uh, uh, find a way to figure out how to play without him. Tyler Haas is with us on BYU Sports Nation. He has scored more points as a BYU basketball player than anybody in the history of the game at BYU. Tyler, as you look at this BYU team moving from, again, back-to-back years where they finished fifth place on the West Coast Conference to where they are now, I know we've all kind of pointed to, well, it's, it's growth, it's, it's chemistry, there's, there's maturity. Those are kind of general statements. Like, what do you feel like is the reason that BYU – has really taken that next step. Can you pinpoint one or two things there that that we can say, this is why BYU is so much better than they were a year ago? Well, I mean, I think a couple of things. I, I think a, a big piece of this whole puzzle has been Ali Khalifa. Yep. Uh, I was talking to I was talking to Tej last night. TJ and I were talking about it, and it's like – there were a lot of question marks around Khalifa when he first got here and the coaches were so high on him. And you know, I, I didn't know how he would fit. I knew BYU wanted to play faster and shoot more threes. And I just didn't see, I didn't see the vision that these coaches had. So you got to give you know, credit to these coaches for going out and, you know, finding him and knowing how he could fit in, uh, in this offense. But I, I feel like, he makes such a difference on the offensive end for, for these shooters. Spencer Johnson, Trevin Nell, Jackson Robinson, Richie, all these guys that are, are great perimeter shooters, he just takes the pressure off them because, he, one, he pulls the big out from underneath the basket, but you can't, you can't go under any screens. Like, you've got to trail these guys, and Khalifa is such a good passer that yeah, if you trail off these handoff situations, uh, he's just going to dice you up. But then if you go under, these guys just step back and, and shoot threes. And so I, I feel like it's kind of pick your poison. And BYU is such a tough team to, to scout in that regard because wh- whatever you do is wrong. And BYU's out there just kind of, you know, taking what the defense gives them. And I think Ali Khalifa is a, is a huge part of that in, in their success, but that that's one piece. But I also think, you know, player development, you got to give these coaches a lot of credit. I mean, look no further than Noah Waterman. I mean, the, the season that he's had compared to last year, the enormous step forward that he has taken uh, has been really, really fun to watch. Um, but 
I mean, everybody across the board has taken really big steps. Um, you know, there were question marks from 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 everyone around where this team would be this year. And it's just it's been really cool to see each individual player take a step forward, but also the group just come together and they play such a fun unselfish style of basketball that uh, is is so fun to watch and so this team is is playing well they're playing together and uh, it's exciting the analysis is pure just like his jump shot Tyler Haas on BYU Sports Nation well said Ty great to have you on the program man hey thanks for having me on guys go Cougs happy Friday See you, Ty. let's go BYU basketball back to work against Kansas State tomorrow. The women also busy, Jerem. Playing in Hilton Coliseum at Iowa State, that's a tough place to play as well. Can the Cougs pull off what they did a couple weeks ago against Baylor, ranked 7 Eastern, BYU Radio? They get 10,000 fans a game at the women's games. You always played at Gonzaga in a similar environment the last couple of years. Let's go. Let's discuss more stakes today. Like, what's at stake for BYU men's volleyball this weekend with number four UCLA in town? We'll discuss after the break. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to the studio, Bizzle on a Friday. I am Spencer, he is Jerem. How about some Friday headlines? Number 25 men's basketball plays at Kansas State tomorrow, pregame on BYU Radio at 1 Eastern. Cougars won the first meeting 72-66, almost two weeks ago. And Lenardi's latest bracketology on ESPN. BYU a six seed playing the winner of Seton Hall and Gonzaga in Pittsburgh. And Mark Pope is one of 15 head coaches that were named to the midseason Naismith Men's College Coach of the Year uh, watch list. Jeremy, I believe it's Gonzaga. Gonzaga. <laughs> They're not the Zogs! And it's Nevada. Oh, Get out of here. Gross. BYU women's basketball working for a bounce back after two straight losses in league play. And on the road at Iowa State tomorrow. BYU 5 and 10 in the Big 12. Cyclones are 9 and 6. You can listen live on BYU Radio beginning at 7 Eastern. Number 8 men's volleyball host number 4 UCLA today and tomorrow 9 Eastern time on BYU TV. The Cougars seeking their first MPSF win after going 0-2 versus number 2 Grand Canyon last week. The Bruins won the Natty last year and are riding a 21-game Federation win streak. BYU softball having a quietly amazing start to the season. Then say it loud for those in the back, Spence. They're 10 and 2. Yeah, baby. After going 2 and 0 on the first day at the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic in Palm Springs, shout out to the Coachella Valley. You lived there three years, bro. Indeed, I did. It was hot in the summer. In game one, BYU beat Bethune Cookman 18 to 5. Take that. Violet Zavadi had a grand slam to spark BYU's offense. 15 different Cougars recorded a hit in that win. In game two, BYU outlast UC Riverside 5 to 3. Chloe Temples went six and two thirds innings pitching, giving up only two earned runs and earns the win. As I mentioned, BYU now 10 and 2. They'll play three more games this weekend against Long Beach State, Cal Poly, and Rutgers. Baseball beat up UC Davis 20 to 4 in game one of a three game series last night. 18 hits, nine extra base uh, hits, homers from Easton Jones and Crew Robinson. BYU trailed 4 2, but then scored 13 runs in the fourth. That typically leads to winning. Games two and three are today and tomorrow on BYU Radio 5 Eastern with Dave McKinn. 24th ranked BYU Gymnastics will host number seven Denver hey. in a big time Big 12 showdown tonight. Wait, Denver's in the Big 12? Yep, they're an affiliate Indeed. in gymnastics. It's the Cougars and Pioneers. Pioneers at BYU in the Marriott Center, right? I love those matchups. BYU off a season high of 196.6 last week. You can watch tonight's meet live at 9 Eastern, courtesy of the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. I know the guy calling the meet. Men and women's track and field begin competition at the Big 12 Indoor Championships today in Lubbock. The first events began earlier this morning and go through tomorrow. BYU women's volleyball's Aaron Livingston. Claire Little and Kate Pryor will represent BYU at the 2024 USA Volleyball Women's National Team Open Program this week. Head coach Heather Olmsted also involved. She'll be an evaluator of the program. Basically, they'll pull from a big pool of players that will compete and go, okay, you can be on the senior team and the B team and the C team. Awesome. Men's tennis won its sixth straight match yesterday, beating Weber State 5-2 back in action tomorrow, hosting Idaho State. Don't sleep on Idaho State. Women's tennis competes today at Fresno State and tomorrow at Cal Poly. And PGA Tour rookie, former BYU golfer Patrick Fishburne, currently tied for 97th through day one at the Mexico Open. He's two over par. Fishburne, known as Ginger Quake, 
I mean, he's a redheaded guy who can hit a drive 360 yards. Made a 46-foot birdie putt late in his first round yesterday. Nice. Good luck to him as he tries and makes the cut. Those are today's headlines. Now for a quick addition of the Big 12 Roundup. Yeah! Number two, Houston at number 11, Baylor. Huge game, CBS, kind of in the early afternoon slash morning. Houston coming off a huge win against Iowa State. Baylor, of course, lost to the Cougs earlier this week. All three of Houston's losses have been on the road, so we'll see what happens. Ken Palm favors Houston by three. If Houston wins, they will be the number one team in the country when the AP poll is released on Monday. Yes, because UConn lost big to Creighton. West Virginia at number six, Iowa State. Good luck to the Mountaineers. Iowa State undefeated at home this season. Cyclones second place in conference at nine and four. Ken Palm favors Iowa State by 19. Texas at number nine, Kansas. Kansas also undefeated at home this year, 13-0. Texas has road wins at Oklahoma, TCU, Cincinnati. Kansas eight and five in the league, Texas six and seven. Kansas by six, that could be an interesting one. Texas plays well on the road. Number 23, Texas Tech at UCF. The Knights have lost four straight games entering this home contest. Texas Tech won the previous meeting in Lubbock by seven. Red Raiders eight and five in league play. UCF tied for last at four and nine. Tech favored by only two points in Orlando. Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. This is Bedlam part two. Oklahoma won the first meeting by four. Oklahoma State enters the game with two straight wins. I don't want to talk about one of them. Sooners six and seven in the Big 12. Cowboys four and nine. Ken Plum by has Oklahoma by four. Would it make all BYU fans feel even better or feel less sting if Oklahoma State wins again? Probably. Uh, a probably, little bit. Like, yeah. oh, they're not that bad. <laughs> Cincinnati at TCU. Both teams coming off tough losses. The Bearcats lost to Oklahoma State. TCU dropped a close game to Texas Tech. Now, the Horned Frogs are 7-6, tied with BYU currently for sixth place. BYU, or rather Cincinnati, 5-8, and eight, and one game in front of last place. TCU a four-point favorite, according to Ken Palm. So let's look quickly at the Big 12 standings. Houston in front, 10-3. Everybody looking up the Cougs in red. Iowa State, uh, heavy favorite. Listen, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Houston loses to Baylor and Iowa State wins, and now those two teams, again, are tied atop the conference no, standings tomorrow. Iowa State or BYU would have a win against Iowa State, a.k.a. tied for best team in the league. That would be nice, so uh, go Cyclones in that one. Yeah, for sure. That wraps up the Big 12 Roundup. Now, some opinions in the whip. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Marist, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Ross Dellinger of Yahoo Sports reports that SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey in the league is, quote, socializing <laughs> a proposal that would fully make December a dead period and move the early signing period to the Wednesday ahead of conference championship weekend. Whoa. Would this be a good move? I don't think so. I, I think that's like it's too early. It's, it's, there's just still too much going on. I, Why do we have to have an early signing period at all? Why not just have the one in February? Yeah, like the SEC is still busy. playing games. And now with the playoff, guess what? It goes even deeper into January. It doesn't go earlier or start the season in late let August. Let the season, I wouldn't mind that, let by the, the way. season play out, and then we'll get to all this stuff. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like it. Does BYU men's volleyball need to win at least one match against number four UCLA this weekend to feel like things are getting going in the right direction? They, they just need it. One, to stay in the hunt in the MPSF. And, and two, it's your rival. And three, you don't want to lose three or four games in a row at home to oh, anybody. Oh, man, rough. But Grand Canyon and UCLA, to me, those are two of the top four teams, and that's what the ABCA says. It's an impossible in start to your home conference schedule. Really difficult. BYU needs to win one of these two this weekend, though. Got to bring it. And according to uh, underscore MLF foot, uh, football, Aiden Robbins has met it with at least 13 NFL teams. Whoa. And one scout described him as an RB draft diamond. Okay. Is he going to pull a Chris Brooks and make an NFL roster next year? I feel like he's going to. He's such a physical presence. He's healthy, and he ran well late in the season against some good teams, notably yep. Oklahoma. Like, his That's best game is needed. Oklahoma, and it was very impressive. So it kind of feels like he's going to be that Chris Brooks guy. I, I sure hope so. That'd be great, man. Number eight men's volleyball, as mentioned, taking on number four UCLA tonight and tomorrow, 9 Eastern on BYU TV. Big time matches. This is the rivalry for the men's volleyball team. It's a busy Friday night in general. Gymnastics with a huge meet against seventh ranked Denver. We'll preview with freshman Brindley Anderson and Ava Jorgensen yeah. next. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner.
This is BYU Sports Nation. We are live on a Friday. We have moved over to the Cougar Council Room as part of this show to welcome in two outstanding gymnasts. They are Brinley Anderson and Ava Jorgensen of BYU yeah. Gymnastics as they get set to take on number seven Denver tonight in another big time Big 12 showdown. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, can you walk us? Can you walk us through just the nerves of a a meet day? Like, how how is it for you? We'll start with you, Brinley. Like, what are the nerves like on a day like today? Um, I think sometimes it depends on where you're at. If you're like away or home, sometimes when you're home, it feels like more like a regular day. So they're a little bit less, but also it depends. Cause if you're away, then it's like, you're doing different things. So you're a little bit more distracted, but I think overall it's not too bad. Neva, how is it for you? Um, for me, the days always feel super long. Like I'm just anxious to like get going. So, um, yeah, they just feel long and, um, but I get super excited. I don't really get super nervous. Are you uh, anxious to get going right now, given that yes. it's meet day? Are you yes. feeling that right now? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Just want to engage that. Um, let's let's talk about the season so far. You guys continue to put up 196 plus. You're coming off a season high at uh, at Kentucky. Now you're at home against a, a good Denver team. Although the there's beam fence, as we like to joke, right? But it's really about you doing your thing. So how do you put up another season high tonight, Brinley? Um, I think, like. Since we're at home, like we'll have our crowd and the support from them. So I think as long as we put all four of our events together, we can put up another season high. And hopefully you get the crowd you had against West Virginia. I was able to mm -hmm. call that meet, and that was a great crowd. They really mm -hmm. got into it. Yeah, it was super fun. Uh, like Brinley said, I think if we just uh, do what we know how to do, and um, my coach always says hits and sticks. So oh, like, yeah. Oh, we, uh, we, we love we're it. Aware. Hits, hits we're, and sticks. We're yes. aware. Yeah. Oh, T-shirts. Yes. <laughs> we need one of those. That's the motto. A free T-shirt tonight. Oh, yeah. okay. Well done. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's solid promotion will, right there. Uh, I have the volleyball match. How am I going to make it over? <laughs> grab me a shirt. See if we can grab, grab you a T-shirt. Sure, okay, we'll take care of that. Ava, speaking of the home crowd, like, and you say you don't feel nervous. You implement the crowd into your floor routine. It's mm -hmm. super fun. So, yeah. whose idea was that? Where, where did the genesis of that come from? Um, so I'm a big Kanye West fan, and going to like volleyball games and football games i lo like love doing the power thing and i kind of just had that idea and then brogan my other coach like just did the choreography really well and so brinley yeah. can you do the entire routine with her basically <laughs> <laughs> all of you guys get which is really fun uh you know you don't see like in football you don't see the the defense like doing the passing motion <laughs> or in basketball the bench isn't like putting up a, you know a shot but you guys are kind of like you're right there for one thing and you're very into it. Uh, Ava, talk about the sort of team nature of, yes, you're the individual performing right there, but your whole team's like very supportive with you. And as soon as you finish, everybody's hugging, everybody's high-fiving. Yeah, um, it's super fun. I think if we just uh, keep the energy up, it like shows in our routine. So we always like to celebrate together and um, yeah just builds the energy and did you guys ask the rock to or you moved you moved floor to a different spot right to mm -hmm. be in front of the rock is that true yeah that's a that was a good move yeah because they're like way into your routine specifically because you what picked songs that kind of are used in men's basketball and football yep. stuff. Yep. it's it was a good choice that was great all right brinley anderson and ava jorgensen with us on byu sports nation the competition has been top here this season. I mean, you've competed in the same meets as Oklahoma and most recently Kentucky and certainly Utah. What has that been like for you as freshmen to jump onto this big stage and, and be competing against those elite level teams? Um, I think like, for example, going into Oklahoma, the number one team, like, you know, they're going to be doing good gymnastics and their crowd was like electric, the loudest building I've ever been in. So mm. I think as a freshman and just a competitor, you have to make sure that you bring your mind back to what you know what to, like, you bring your mind back to what you know how to do, and you've trained for this, and you have to trust yourself in those situations. And luckily, the beam's super wide, and it's just super easy to land <laughs> on, know. right? It's, I, it's crazy. I love watching what you guys do, because it's like, well, I couldn't do that in a million years, <laughs> which is really fun. Um, okay, you're past the halfway point of the season. The season goes by way too fast. How do you feel like you guys have done so far and what's left to accomplish? I think we've done really well. Um, we've improved every meet, but I still think that we could uh, do better. Uh, we need to put all four events together and I think we could really compete with the big teams. Do you feel like there is an event that you've pinpointed like, okay, like this is like, 
maybe this is the one that we have the most uh, room to improve in or, or the ceiling? If so, what, what is that? Is I mean, what do you think? Right now, you're ranked 40th in floor. I the think, others, you're in the high 20s. Yeah, I think it depends because, like, the past couple meets, it's kind of jumped around, like, mm. which event was our lowest. Sure. But maybe probably floor. How is the sort of individual and team dynamic of gymnastics? And did you grow up playing other sports where it's almost more like golf, like team golf too, where it's like, I got to do good and so do you. And then together we're good. How do you sort of balance the, I need to do my job and then our team needs to succeed. How do you manage that? Brindley? I think that that comes down to like trusting your teammates and trusting the lineups that the coaches put out because you have to trust that they're making the decision they think is best. And so I think, like supporting your teammates for the people who are in the lineup and letting them know that you know they can do it, then that helps the whole team culture. Ada, you mentioned like you don't really get nervous, especially at home. Are you more How nervous for this or the meets, by the way? <laughs> This? <laughs> it's amazing. That's amazing. You can do that and not be nervous. This is just preparing you for the easy thing tonight, right? We want right? this to be the hardest yeah, thing to do all day. Yeah. very <laughs> difficult. Um, when did you notice in your career that, like, it just was a natural thing? Like, oh, I'm not nervous anymore. Like, at what point did that happen? Um, probably a couple years ago. I've been in the same level for, like, seven years now. So, like, it just became what I do every year. And I, like, gained confidence every year. Um, so now it's just, it's the same old thing that I do. Brindley, is there any, like, did you even care who you compete against? Like, hey, it's Denver, they're number seven. They're also in the big 12. Like, how much do you care about the opponent given that you don't actually ever defend against them yet you're competing? Yeah, I think it is. You definitely see them and you notice them and sometimes you can like catch yourself watching them, but it's important to just focus on what we're doing and what my job is and the team's job. All right, some quick hitters here. Why did both of you pick BYU? Because you have plenty of options. You've been a high level gymnast for a long time. So Brindley, why did you pick BYU? I picked BYU because I love all the people here in the environment and it was close to home. Okay, makes sense. Ava, what about you? Uh, I have a bunch of family over here and my family grew up grew up going to BYU and I just love the mountains and the campus is super pretty so it's awesome being being from Morham we we have a touchstone of a lot of BYU fans which mm -hmm. is awesome nearby and then Gilbert a lot of BYU fans as well and you went to Perry home of Brock Purdy Brock Purdy Brock Purdy but it is, it's it's a big it's, 12 guy Perry's about Ava Jorgensen is it not <laughs> now we can it make is. it that. It is. Let's go. <laughs> Come and, on. And Cameron's your cousin on the soccer team? Yeah. Jorgensen's repping. Mm-hmm. Very, nice. Very nice. All right. Uh, it's been great to have both of you in Studio B. Because you are freshmen and you're new to this, this is the first time for you on the show. This is how it works. You come on the show, you get BYU Sports Nation karma. So what that means is you're just going to be awesome tonight. A.K. Okay, good oh. luck. So okay. it's it's a 9925 minimum right. on the beam right. for you, Brindley. That's what I was no planning. pressure. And then Ava, it's nine nines on the floor and vault. That's what we're looking at tonight. That's what we're looking at. So good luck and thanks for coming in. Just relax. Like you got the karma. It's all good you'll, you'll now. Do great. Thank you. Yeah, you'll yeah. Do great. Yeah. Was it that bad, Ava? Was it that No, was it, that it wasn't. Bad? <laughs> One of these times I want someone to say, yeah, it, yeah, was. it was awful. It was Get terrible. me off yeah, of this terrible. show. <laughs> Check out. Ava and Brindley and the Kooks tonight as number 24 gymnastics takes on number seven Denver. The beam fence is going to be amazing. Guard Young's going to be chanting, beam fence, and the Rock's going to respond <laughs> tonight at 9 Eastern on Big 12 Now on ESPN. Oh, we love Coach Young, man. He brings it for BYU, doing an incredible job. We'll wrap up today's show with more responses to our question of the day. And who gets the rise and shout out? I feel like there may be a hospital tie here. Yes, there's an obvious one. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation with our question of the day. It's a poll question. Which of the following statements about BYU basketball is most true right now? The Cougars will win at Kansas State tomorrow. BYU will finish the regular season with a winning record in the Big 12. BYU will win at least one game in the Big 12 tournament. Or BYU will be a five-seater higher in the NCAA tournament. And your winner right now is... The Cougars will win at least one game in the Big 12 tournament. 46% of the vote right there. People feeling confident. I like it. I think BYU shows up Wednesday, gets to Thursday, and then let's see if BYU can't see what uh, do something Thursday. Let's go. Our lead voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated from Ron Grover on Facebook says, if BYU is going to have a winning record in the Big 12, they have to win at Kansas State. We agree. Yeah. Then split in the final four games with one tourney win. That might get them a five seed. It might. Let's hope.
Today's Rise and Shoutout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Spencer Johnson, his wife Izzy, uh, had their first baby boy yesterday. Congratulations to the Johnsons. So outstanding. And uh, if he plays, great. We will lo we'll love you either way, Spencer. All good, dog. This team's deep. <laughs> Our thanks to today's guests, Tyler Haas, Brinley Anderson, and Ava Jorgensen. Sorry, Dennis. No time. For Jerem, I'm Spencer. It's that time of year where we shout out to Gary Trost. Go Cougs! See you tonight for gymnastics and volleyball.